So in the past, across the country, we had different school districts, different curricula, um, different people on different pages from state to state, from district to district. So the Common Core state standards are really um, something that almost every state has adopted in order to assure that we're all on the same page and that we're really helping our students to be more critical thinkers in college ready. This year we're transitioning into this new Common Core and we get to work around more challenging problems. And we do see greater conceptual understanding overall. We have two problems here, number one. What do we get for the first one? Today we worked on word problems that had real life applications. She gets in the fair for $5 mm -hmm. and she's doing $3 yeah. each ride. Could you write an, an, an expression that just represents that information? In this case it was the number of rides Veronica can go on at a fair based on how much money she had in her pocket, knowing how much the admission was and how much it was per ride. If you can understand what the question is asking you, then you can put it on a graph and it's gonna help you write an expression or a, an inequality to help you figure out what the solutions are gonna be. The trick of it was to turn that situation into an expression and then adapt it to an inequality. What does this one say? In, in Mark, you said it was called? Less than. Less than. Say, say this. Less than or equal to. In the past, I feel like what we were doing is building the pieces so that at the very end of the unit, we're answering application problems. Instead, we're starting with those, bringing in all the pieces that we need. Could she, by the way, could she go on negative one ride? No. no. That's impossible. Could she go on 9.5 rides? No. How do you go on half a ride? Yeah, exactly. How do you go on half a ride? We're moving it all forward with one single word problem that has multi levels. You know, the parts of it are, are much more complex. 15 less than the number of rides she makes 15 is, so it'd be 15 is greater than R. As soon as I answer a question, then I've lost an opportunity. So we're trying to set up greater discussions. Is there somebody that might be able to defend that? Lewis. Zero is greater than negative four. I think it'll help us a lot actually because we're not really relying on the extra help from the teacher. We're kind of like trying to come up with it on our own. It's actually more fun for me too because then I'm just saying it's up to you guys. You guys are doing the math. We discuss it. We show the work to kind of prove our point across and show whoever's sitting next to us if they have the right answer or not and why. It's exciting to see when that does start going really well. Everyone at the table now is engaged because they're answering the question themselves. I like what Sean and Lewis are thinking, yeah. We got down to the final moment and we had another discussion about discrete versus continuous data. Could you convince the people who are still skeptical, I need somebody to, to sell us on one of these. 48 cannot be greater than 48 itself. They're both equal. They're actually speaking to the math itself in, the, in a mathy way without even knowing it. So these questions are easy. These questions are easy, I love that. And what'd you get? <laughs> What's less than or equal to 14. 14, okay. The most rewarding part is that all the students do collectively understand this piece that we need them to. And to then see that fall for each student, table by table, it's, it's wonderful for me.